We're going to be doing 3D and 2D, I guess, geometry. Uh, that's why I thought this one here, without geometry, life would be pointless. I thought it would be a good idea to review first. These are not things that are on your formula booklet, but they're still things you need to know about, okay? So that's why they're called review. Um, let's talk about the area of a circle. Well, if we have a circle, we normally define it as this thing right here. We call this R. R is the radius. And if this right here is the radius, then I don't know if you remember what the area is of a circle, but it's uh, A equals, we normally call it A for area, A is 2, oh, oops, no, it's not, it's pi R squared. There we go. So that's the area of a circle. And there's circumference, which means if you walk all the way around it, it means that we can call it a perimeter in general. A perimeter is when you walk around anything. But in, in terms of a circle, we have a special word for what we call the circumference. Um, we normally say C is 2 times pi times R. So this is an important thing. So we have this, this letter pi here. Pi is an irrational number. That means it's a number that you can't write as a fraction. It doesn't repeat. Uh, so it's, you know, 3.14, da, 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 it keeps going forever. Some people actually memorize it really far, but here we go. These are the things you need for a circle. Put a little square around them. So still needs to know. It's really important. All right, what if we have some kind of box, some cuboid? I mean, it could be a cube, it could be a whatever, but let's say we call this, I don't know, maybe the L for the length, maybe W for the width, and maybe H for the height because there'll be maybe three different dimensions. This, it doesn't have to be a cube. It could be whatever. This could be really short, really long, really, really tall here, whatever. Well, the volume, I don't know if you remember this, but the volume is just, you just multiply them. So length times width times height. So L times width times height. There we go. Now the surface area, how do you do that? Here you have to add up, uh, let's see, the area of each side. Now, how many sides does this cuboid have? Think about it. I mean, if you think about like a die, if you're playing dice, it's got six sides. So I've got to add up all the different six sides. So I'm going to call it SA. SA short for surface area. And let's see now. It's going to be this front face right here has dimensions. This is L this way. And how tall is this? That's H. So I've got L times H. Now, how many of these do I have? It turns out I have one here in the front. I also have one in the back. So that's why I've got 2LH. Then I have to add up, let's see now, how about the right one here? So that's a W times H, so, so WH. And I've got one of these, and I've got another one on this side, so 2WH, or HW, the order doesn't matter. Plus, let's see, I've got a top and a bottom. Well, the bottom has dimensions LW, right? so LW. And I've got one of those, I've got one of those on the top, so 2LW. So there we go. This is how I could do it in general. If you really needed to figure it out, you could. There you go. That's how you would do it. Let's keep going now with the ones you do need uh, to have on your formula booklet. We have a right pyramid. This is a square base. Okay. Um, so it's hard to imagine, but you have to imagine a, a square bottom, and then it's got these four triangular faces all sort of facing each other. Now, we define something here called h. h is going to be the height. It's the vertical height from the center to like right here like this. We call that right there h. That's the height here. We also have something right here called a, the area of the base. That's going to be this piece right here. So like, like this, just the way I've drawn it like that, it'll be like this. That'll be a. a will be the area of that base. So like if this is a length and the width, I would multiply those two together to get the area of the base. And good news, we don't have to memorize this. This is on our formula booklet, the volume of a right pyramid. We have that. So V equals. Now, uh, you don't have to memorize this. You can always just look it up. But it's, uh, what is it? it's one third A times H. That's it. Okay, you just need this. So this is where your A is the area of the base. H is this vertical height. There we go. This is on your formula booklet. So I'll maybe write that down here. This on your formula booklet. Now for short, maybe I'll just say FB. I don't mean Facebook, I mean formula booklet. So yes, okay? So I'm gonna say like FB, yes. Because we're gonna have a lot of equations here. How about a right cone? This is a circle on the bottom of it. So because of that, we need some sort of radius here. I'll call it R. 
We have some sort of vertical height here from the tippy top of the cone all the way to the middle here. We'll call that h, that'll be the height. And we're gonna have something a little bit weird. We're gonna call this length right here, we're gonna call that the slant height, little l here. That's gonna be this l is the slant height. I'm just trying to make an l that doesn't look like a one, otherwise it looks like a one. So here we go, we have the volume of a cone. And it's a right cone because it's 90 degrees. You know, it's not some cone that's been, you know, stretched or anything like that. That's what we call it, a right cone. It's got a right angle, just like a right pyramid here. All right, so what's the volume of a right cone? Well, it's, um, whoops, all right, like this. So V equals, and again, just like we had with the right pyramid with a one-third, we have a one-third as well here. So it's one-third pi, uh, and it's R squared, and then it's H. So this is your, R is the radius, H is the height here. So that's your volume of a right cone. Now what if you wanted to take this piece? It's a little bit more complicated here, but you could take this piece right here, this curved surface of the cone. That's this top part here, not the bottom. So we don't mean the bottom here, we mean the top. In case you want like the surface area of this cone, you have to know how much is this piece. If you sort of, if you put a slit through it and you unwrapped it and you took a look at what does it look like, this right here we have, um, an equation for this as well, the area of the curved surface. So that's going to be A equals, I mean, because here the bottom was easy, it was just the area of the bottom. Right? Here the area of the bottom is easy, it's just a circle, but the area of this top part here that's sort of turning around, that's the more complicated seeming one. So that's why it's nice to have that equation, and thankfully they give it to you. So it's pi r l where r is the radius, but l is this slant height. So maybe you have to do some trigonometry in order to figure out maybe what's that length. So these equations, by the way, are also on your formula booklet, so that'll be nice. So this is for the right cone. We have this one, and we have this one. And both of these are on your formula booklet, so hooray, hooray, you do not have to memorize them. Okay, so I'll say f formula booklet, yes. Formula booklet, also yes. That's good to know. Now we keep going. We have a sphere. That's why I put this, the only thing flat earthers fear is sphere itself. <laughs> I like that one. All right, we have a sphere here. I'm trying to draw like a, a ball. It's hard to draw in 2D, so I spent a little bit of time trying to think about how to do it here. So this right here, we're gonna define this here as the radius of that. So it's a three-dimensional circle. So the volume of a sphere then, it's kind of neat. In calculus, if you do some 3D calculus, you can actually figure this out. You can actually get to this number, but I'll just give it to you now because depending on your level of math, you don't necessarily need it. It's 4 thirds pi r, and it's cubed because it's a volume. So 4 thirds pi r cubed. Over here, for example, um, it was 1 third a h. That's true. This right here was uh, pi r squared h. The reason it gave us that is because r squared times h gives us distance cubed still. Um, over here, however, it's nice and simple. It's just 4 thirds pi r cubed, where r is the radius. And if we want the surface area, if I want to know, you know how much material would I need, let's say, to make this the outside of the sphere, we have an equation for that as well. It's just 4 pi r squared. Good news, you get both of these. So you don't have to memorize this either. So this is given, and so is this. So these are nice. You don't have to memorize them. I put, you know, formula booklet, yes. Formula booklet, also yes. Now just to do definitions, what's a hemisphere? Hemi means half. So in this case right here, so half a sphere. So that means if you want to know the volume, for example, let's just say you wanted to do the volume of this. Well, the volume would be, it would be 4 thirds pi r cubed, all that divided by 2. What happens then? Well, the three and the two would multiply together, so I could say it's uh, four pi r cubed on the top, and three times two is six. But then I could say that, well, the four and the six, I could do something with them, I can divide them both by two, so it'll be two pi r cubed over, let's see, six divided by two is three. So I guess you could say that the volume of the hemisphere then will be this. But if you wanted the surface area of it, well, I guess you could take this four pi r squared, divide it by two, that would give you the top part, but you'd still need to know the bottom part, so you'd have to do the um, area of a circle on the bottom. So just to show you that they can do some sneaky things, you just gotta know what every word means. So hemisphere just means half of a sphere. There you go. 
All right, so now we've got a practical example. We're having a small toy. It's made up of a cuboid, which is this bottom part here. And it's got a right pyramid attached to the top of it. And it's got the same dimensions. This little h here is this vertical height we talked about before. Now we're told the volume, what is h? So what I like about this one here, it helps to actually know or to write down the volume equations of both of these. So let's do the volume of the pyramid and we'll do the volume of the cuboid. And obviously I drew these in 2D, but we'll see this. So it helps to look those up. So let's get the volume of the pyramid. It's one third AH, so I'll write that down. Okay, so one third AH. I like to write this down so I can see what I'm gonna do. The volume of the cuboid is not given in the formula booklet, but you need to know about it. Uh, here it is. So just L times W times H. So there we go. So I gotta know that one right there, so. In this case here, it's going to be, yeah, I'll just say L times W times H. Now, what's the volume? The total volume then will be just all these added together, these two things added together, right? So V, maybe I'll write in blue. So I'll say the V total will just be those two things added together. So the one-third AH plus the L times W times H. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll put in the real numbers I need here. So V total then, let's see, what will that be? It'll be one third times, now what's the area of the base here, of this? Maybe it's hard to see, you know what I'll do? I'll do it in a different color. I'll do that one maybe in purple. So let's do this one here. We need to know the area of the base, that's what this is. So let's look here. This right here is my area of my base here, it's this. What are the dimensions of the base? Well, this length is five, and this one over here is six. So the area of the base then will be, let's say it's one third, area of the base will be five times six. Now I gotta multiply that by the height. The height here, actually I don't know that yet. That's actually what I'm gonna be trying to find. All that, let's see here, plus, maybe I'll do it in another color. I'll do it in black. So plus, length times width times height. In this case, it's five times six times four, right? So five times six times four. So this is my goal. And by the way, I know the volume. I know the total volume. I know that value is 150. So I can go even further and say 150 equals, let's see here, five times six is 30. 30 divided by three is just 10. So I've got 10 H. Now here I've got five times six, which is 30. 30 times 4 is like uh, 3 times 4, that's uh, 120. Here we go. So then I can say, let's see, I'm going to move my 120 over to the left. So I can say 150 minus 120 is going to be 30. So 30 equals 10 H. And finally, then I can say that H equals 30 over 10, which is, let's see, I can divide both by, well, I mean, 30 over 10 is just 3. I'm just maybe showing you too many steps. But therefore, I can say that H equals three centimeters. There we go, I'm done. I didn't even need a calculator for it. If you're allowed a calculator, of course you can, I guess, but I mean, I think this is kind of nice. You can, you can have calculated uh, this without even using a calculator. Isn't that nice?